you up. Oh, sheep bomb. Going down. Setting up. Oh, nice bridge. And oh, drop kick, kick there right, right to the, to the top of the head. He's, he's out. Guys, he's out. I think the referee needs to oh, let him out. Obama wants to get rid of the car miners. Oh, oh, and displaying that power. Could this be you a twisted pervert. Stay away from me. And stay away from my mama. And stay away from my mama's oh, fighting. Oh, 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 there it is right the there. Is applied. The ball is applied. James is Joey Morton over a table. He does it. It's going to suck to be you. I think Cuban Assassin is a uh, is a, a a gentleman who stepped in and tried to steal the gimmick from uh, a gimmick that we helped create for one of our favorite okay. WWE superstars. That's what the I was Revolution. trying to figure out. Is I see him out on TV in this week's episode because I'm one of the TV viewers right now. I'm not getting to go to the shows, and it's like him, the the lucha chick. And oh, uh, uh, and Stephen Michaels in uh, uh, Roger Ham's no, outfit. Yeah, okay, and he's 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 like suddenly calling his stable the Revolution, and it was funny because the first show I'm at that he's at, they come out to the ring. Well, I yell Revolution because Stephen Michaels is in the ring, and I'm a Stephen Michaels fan. We all are. I mean, we. Oh yeah, Stephen yeah. Michaels marks. He looks at yeah. me and starts like like jumping me like like I, I think he called me a pit bull. Or a pimple or something. I don't know. Whatever it was. I'm like, who does this guy think he is? To come in, and, first of all, try to steal Stephen Michael's gimmick and to get himself over and just be like, yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to get this thing over. Buddy, it was already over before you ever stepped foot in the company, okay? Um, hey, man. Way over. And uh, so, anyhow, he does that. He, he picks me to start coming out. Then he goes out and manages to uh, win the lightweight title suddenly in. In a the lightweight title. The, oh, he's the no lightweight. Is he the got like he's no lightweight? I was gonna say, is he, he got some the, of those tricky scales or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the junior champ. Well, so we, uh, we, I didn't like that. Number two, number three, he comes out last show and st- <laughs> poor Stevie, uh, Stevie, a man not known for his restraint when it comes to uh, letting wrestlers have it in the ring, so to speak. Stevie has a change of heart. The Cuban assassin walks out. Stevie actually reaches down to give the Cuban assassin a handshake. The Cuban assassin gives him the Ric Flair no sell, and uh, he 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 pulls away. At that point, I'm like, this guy. So we let him have it the last match. He, it was him and a uh, him and John Heartbreak, and we decided that we absolutely like John Heartbreak a lot more than we did Cuban assassin. So we booed Cuban assassin through the whole match, cheered for Heartbreak, and that's just. Uh, now I'll be a monkey's uncle. Well, we got six-man action here. So we got John Heartbreak, the Russian Invader, and the Golden Invader taking on the team of the Revolution of Cuban Assassin Sasaki and Stephen Michaels. Eric Foster, I am not sure what's about to happen. I, yeah. I, I am. There's going to be a six-man tag match. Really? Because I see five men. Well... A six-person tag And, and I'm questioning a couple of those men as men. Yeah. Just for the record. I mean, the only This guy's wearing blue boots and a gold mask. What the heck? That is the Golden Invader. The, the Golden Invader. The only one that I will vouch for as a man is Sasaki. Because she's more man than any of the rest of us. I, I, you know, I tend to agree with you, Hojo. 
I, you know, you, you guys mentioned New Year's earlier, and we've seen the heartthrobs out here earlier. And I know, were you guys invited to Hustler Rip Manson's uh, New Year's party? Um, that is a negative. Um, Hojo and I spent the, uh, the New Year's celebrating it right. And um, that is all we can say for the uh, time the uh, statute of limitations won't run out for a while. Well, yeah, I hope to get a word. about eight years. I hope to get a word with Roger Ham later because I, I heard that he may have had to stay with a babysitter. I don't know. But anyway, about this match, Golden Invader and Sasaki right there in the Sasaki middle of the ring. Sasaki getting all fired up. Look at her. Sasaki Look just, oh, just kicked him right or in the stomach. whatever that is. Yeah, well, it's the Golden Invader. Golden Invader. Yes. Invader. Invader. Okay. Yeah, we got the Russian Invader out there, too, along with John Heartbreak. And right. as we see the tagged in, Stephen Michaels, Mr. Revolution himself. That's ought to be great. Can he spell revolution? I mean, really. He, he leaves the U out of it. Though. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Stephen Michaels was but, uh, oh. oh, what a clothesline there by the Golden Invader onto Stephen Michaels. I think Invader just went for whatever may have worked right there, and I think that's yeah. actually worked for him. Side headlock right there. And I think this is the first time we've seen as a team John Heartbreak and the Russian Invader. Now, we've seen John Heartbreak as the Russian Invader, but it's nice to actually see that they're not one and the same. I got you. Nice clothesline right there by Mr. Communist Russian himself. As Cuban Assassin tries to come in. And, and the crowd coming alive for Stephen Michaels. I don't know about the revolution, but they're going to have to find a revoluting way to get out of there. They're going to have to find something, that's for sure. As we see here, the referee. And he, My, oh, got Cuban got Assassin right back. Well, Cuban Assassin's back in the ring um, as, as the Golden Invader and John Heartbreak taking it all to Stephen Michaels right there. Right behind the referee's back. Six businesses on one head. That's a clubber. That's, is that what you call it? That's what you call it. That's, a, that's, the, that's the fucking Wagner definition of it. It's a straight camera. I don't want his ass on TV. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the wrong one. Oh, what a big uh, double stomp right into the gut of Stephen Michaels. It's John Heartbreak. John Heartbreak goes for the cover. One. A Cuban assassin just pulls the man right off. John Heartbreak wasn't happy about that. They're going to have a fundamental disagreement here in a minute. Yeah. Oh, what could this be? I think he's going for a sharpshooter. Yeah, it's a sharpshooter there by John Heartbreak. That's a crowd chance for Stephen Michelson not to tap out. That's a nice version of the sharpshooter there. I'll give Heartbreak credit for that. Oh, oh come on, ref. Cuban assassin comes now. in I mean, and breaks it up again. I'm not cheering for Heartbreak here by any stretch of imagination, but let's keep some control. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, referee Patrick Nichols is one of the best in the business. And it's a real plus for us to have him here. Absolutely. And now he shoots Stephen Michaels off. Comes off with a big drop kick right there. This what a Heartbreak. maneuver. That was a beautiful leg Larry. I haven't seen something like that in quite a while. Wow. John Heartbreak goes for the cover. Diving pit. No. One count. Goes for the diving count. This referee Patrick Nicholas. I told you. It's great to have Patrick Nicholas here in the ring here at WVCW making his debut here in the new year of 2013 as as the Golden Invader taking it to Stephen Michaels here. Stephen Michaels has definitely got the worst part of this match here. He's got the arm locked right there. That's a great submission. But no, guy, hey, get him out of there. Come, Come on. on. The referee needs to get a little bit of control here and get the Cuban assassin out of the ring. But why is he doing that? Here comes John Heartbreak and the Russian Invader. They, they think better of it and back out. Oh, here comes Michaels now. Michaels coming back on the, the Golden Invader. Good gracious. A lot of fist of fury there by Michaels. Where'd he come up with that? I think he needs to tag out. That's, you know. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. As, as the fans start calling him. There you go. 
the fans start calling him Psycho Steven. Well, that may hold. Maybe he just got pushed too far. Lord, if I know. He got pushed? I don't know. It's Cuban assassin goes and pushes John Heartbreak. The Cuban assassin with the submission move there onto the Golden Invader. Hey, this is going to be a problem for the Golden Invader there. I'm going to tell you, Cuban is, is, is a veteran in this industry. He knows he probably knows more holds than I've forgotten. He's a wily veteran. <laughs> he's just wily. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess he's a veteran, Goes too. Goes to cover one, two, two count there. Right, by, Golden Invader got out of that one. Yeah, two count there by Golden Invader. Oh, Cuban assassin just bringing in John Heartbreak the hard way. This thing's broken uh, yeah, down right here. Yeah, this thing's broken down. I've Here's even lost control of who's the legal man here. <laughs> I feel well, bad. There for goes the referee. Golden Invader. Okay, so he's not legal. Uh, let's and hope Sasaki's not. out, so he's not. She's not legal. I, I have no idea who's legal. I don't either. Oh, what a move there by. Oh my! Goes to go one, two, three. Heartbreak there beat go. him. Heartbreak beat. Heartbreak beat the junior heavyweight champion. Heartbreak pinned the junior heavyweight champion. Oh you know my what? God! Hey, go to the WVCW Facebook page and let us hear from you. What would you like to see in West Virginia Championship Wrestling? Leave us a comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WBCWTV. got the titles nobody else is going to get those championships but the bunkhouse boys and we're going to lay rights to them and we'll take out anybody that steps in the way because we're the top contenders and we're going to be your tag team champions Fans of WBCW, it's been a mere few short hours since the events with the Bunkhouse Boys. And as I, as Hojo and I sit here at our favorite post-show meal and ponder what has happened, I am left simply with the thoughts that this goes beyond Texas and West Virginia. This is beyond a rivalry, two completely separate entities and states and regions. Yeah. This is personal. This is about decency versus filth. Decent, hardworking people of the great state of West Virginia and the filth that comes from Texas. Bunkhouse boys, we didn't ask you to come involve yourself. No, we didn't. But you stuck your nose there. You stuck your nose where it didn't belong. And I'm going to tell you right now, as I enjoy my chicken and eggs, that you awoke sleeping giants. You made this personal. And if you want to take it that far, then we'll take it as far as you want to take it. Tag titles or not, come on and find us anytime. Anytime. Right here, wait. Anytime. 
You read all that? Probably. All right, wrestling fans, our opening contest is a part of our junior heavyweight title tournament that you will see on this program over the next four weeks. Of course, I'm Eric St. Clair. Joining me this week, the Mad Dog, David Lynch. That's right, baby. Mad Dog's in the house. Uh, Mad Dog, what do you think of junior heavyweights? Uh, I think they're cannon fodder. <laughs> they're cute. Nice shoulder tackle takedown right there. It's like, watching, it's like watching the world's tallest midgets wrestle. And there's two good ones right in the ring right now. Blocks a suplex. Now Williams, oh, kind of a modified body slam suplex right there. I think he's trying to kill him. Well, it might be effective. Over the next four weeks on television, fans, we will crown our first WVCW Junior Heavyweight title. This is an opening round contest, the first match in the tournament. Of course, in the blue and the red is David Williams. The black is one half of the Boogie Boys, Daniel Halen. Well, they're exchanging some blows. There's a reversal by Dan Halen. Oh, well, nice, nice clothesline. Nice clothesline. Took him right out of his boots almost. Might get him there. Nope, didn't Got a two get. count on him. So what's the weight limit there on that junior heavyweight title? 225 pounds, they say, which is, a, which is about what I can pounds, eat at a buffet. 225 so. pounds. Well, maybe I'll drop about five pounds and start <laughs> kicking some little men's butts. As far as the junior heavyweight title tournament goes, we have six of WVCW's best junior heavyweights in the title tournament. You will see two oh. matches of that tournament today. Uh, just to make note that as by a random draw, buys were awarded in the first round to the great Sasaki and also John Heartbreak. So they will actually get into the second round to the semifinals uh, without having to do anything but be their name in a hat. Halen now looking to come back with some nice – Scoop right there. Body slam takes down Dave Williams. Scoop and a slam with authority. Halen looks like he's trying to set him up for something. What's this going to be? He's stunned. Oh, sidestep right there into a spear. Uh, almost drove him out of the ring on that one. A lot of momentum right there. Almost took Dave Williams out to the floor. Halen with a cover. Got his shoulder up. He should have hooked the tights. Well, now that's illegal, isn't it? Only if you get caught. Uh oh. Hit him with the spear again. That was a good one. Solid contact made on that Halen one. Halen with a victory right there. He'll advance. That got him the three count. Today, a legendary figure who's going to be with us throughout the series. He's a man, well, he needs no introduction. He defeated 3,000 men over the last 30 years with a heart punch. I'm talking about the one and only, the fantastic Ox Baker. When you third 30 years, you probably meant 40 years. And the famous. Uh, Riots that started in Cleveland uh, when you were hard. Oh, Lordy Lad got in the ring, said nobody could knock him down. He was trying to tell me how tough he was. He said he beat his grandmother up a couple of times, but when I hit him with that hurt punch, he went down. He stayed down. The people thought I was trying to kill him, so they broke a chair over my head. I only laughed when it hurt me. McKenzie. Dex McKenzie, six foot nine, even more clumsier than I am. One. You know, I always loved my fans, and I always hated every referee there was. You can beat your wife and your girlfriend, but you can't beat this either. Welcome back, everybody. Um, what, 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 what's going on here? This was supposed to be Scotty Blaze 
and Ricky Shane from the challenge earlier uh, in the in the program. But it looks like we got Dave Scott against Ricky Shane here. A couple oh. of those close on guns for a crossbody. Wait a minute. And, and you know, Shotgun Sullivan, obviously he has a couple of screws loose and calling Joey Ricky Morton. That's that's Joey's brother. And now joining us back here at ringside is, is David House. David, what was that all about? Wait, Taking wait. care of business, making a statement. Those belts are coming back to bunkhouse boards before it's all said and done. Mark my words. I was going to say, Mr. House, that was very, very beautiful. I loved it. Well, thank you. That was what you call making a statement. But I came out here since I've been signed on to do the commentary to make sure I commentate on this main event match with Welcome you, back. Brother Herc, and Foster. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I mean, this is just crazy what's going on right here. Well, right now, the, it, it's supposed to be Scotty Blaze, but he, he's not out here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that deal, but I think either way, Ricky Shane's going to have his work cut out for him with Dangerous Dave Scott. Oh, yeah, this first time, First time that Dave Scott and Ricky Shane met, Ricky Shane got lucky. This time, Dave Scott's prepared for him. Dave Scott's going to be able to make, Look, get the hey, win on this. Fans, J.C. Dykes is sitting out in the crowd. Oh my! What in the world's this? He is. He needs to be back in the back in the hospital. Just, Did he buy a ticket? He must have bought a ticket. I don't know if he bought a ticket or not. Did I'm the duck buy a ticket? You guys. Oh, wait a minute. Here goes Dave Scott back into the ring the hard way. All right, Ricky Shane on him. Irish rip off the rope. Ooh, back elbow. That was a nice back elbow by Ricky Shane. Picks him up. Boom. Beautiful. Going for the cover here. One. One. No. Showing frustration, Ricky Shane is. See, he, he's got to realize it's too early in the match. And with a veteran like Dave Scott, he's going to make sure, like, you see that he rolled out of the ring to break the momentum that Ricky Shane had, biding his time, making Ricky Shane wrestle on his time. That's the sign of a veteran right there. As, as you know, like this match, we said, you know, Ricky Shane was scheduled, had challenged Scotty Blaze. I mean, it wasn't really scheduled, but we all presumed. Yeah. We seen Scotty earlier, but maybe he may have left. I don't know, but but dangerous Dave Scott's out here now taking on Ricky Shane. I don't think Ricky Shane was totally prepared for this. No. Well, I guarantee you with, uh, you got one thing I guess you got to remember with old school elite, if you mess with one, you mess with all of them. And this is a case in point. One wasn't able to be here, so another one steps in his place. Say, didn't we used to run like that? We did, but. You know, maybe Dave Scott thinks that this may be a late Christmas present since Christmas was just yesterday to Ricky Shane. Mm. Yes, yeah, like I said before at the top of this broadcast, it's season's beatings for Ricky Shane right now. All right, Dave Scott missed that leg drop. Looks like Big he... double arm suplex right there. Beautiful butterfly. They're going for the cover here, one, two. And Dave Scott, there's still a lot of fight in Dave Scott here. And what's Ricky Shane doing here? He's taking a breather. Time out? Yeah, he's saying time out. <laughs> Is Ricky Shane giving them the time out? Well, there, there are no timeouts in wrestling unless you allow timeouts to happen. Nice. Oh. Dave Scott with a kick here and a forearm to the back. Nice. See, that's what Ricky Shane gets for giving him a timeout. He was able to get, his, get a breather get the air back in the lungs, and then start thinking straight and start going and formulating a plan of attack. What a crafty veteran. That's something you definitely don't want to do. You don't want to give somebody like Dave Scott a chance to get their air back. As you can see here, Dave Scott just taking it to Ricky Shane. Stops oh. and throws him off on the rope. Big sleeper hold right there. Ricky Shane out of it, pushes him off the ropes. Sleeper hold of its own. He has to jump onto his back. Look. Yeah, that's definitely a Oh, and oh. he just falls back with a big chin buster oh, that was onto a Ricky Shane. Well, he better be glad Christmas was yesterday because there's no way he was going to be eating the Christmas dinner after that. He just got jaw jacked. <laughs> oh, Ricky go. Shane grabbing his hand on the rope. Shotgun Sullivan right there, knocking his hand right back off of it. Dave Scott doesn't look too happy. See, uh, that's ring presence there by Ricky Shane, knowing exactly where he's at all times in the middle of that ring. Right, continue to work on that shoulder. And it looks like Dave Scott's starting to work on the, uh, on the arm. But specifically trying to affect those nerves, oh. trying to make it to where uh, start getting those uh, muscles starting to get numb to where he can't really fully utilize his arm. So that's a, definitely a, a veteran move there. Oh, oh, and he just hits him with the cane. Oh, man. Yeah, Ricky Shane's in some deep trouble here. But I was going to say, that's what I like about Dave Scott. You know, he's a great technician. And when he finds that weakness, he will do whatever it takes to expose it, as we're saying now. Or See, that's what, that's what a lot of people call Anderson-style wrestling. 
being able to pick a body part and just stick with it and tear it apart piece by piece by piece. Just like right now. Ooh, sharp elbow. He's not letting go either. Now, Ricky Shane, he's better uh, start doing something sooner or else he's going to be losing the, uh, losing the use of that arm permanently. Oh, yeah. By the time David Scott's done. That's one thing you... One thing you can't actually let happen is Dave Scott being able to work on the body part for so long. Absolutely. That body part will not be working straight for a long while. I mean, we've seen him do this multiple times, and every time is it's just painful to watch. Guys, I've just, I've just been watching this study. I really think that, that as soon as the challenge was made, I think they had, Dave Scott knew that it was going to be him that was going to come out here because it looks like that he is – um, definitely trying to get some revenge back for, for a loss just a couple of weeks ago here on television. Oh, he, oh, he's definitely getting revenge. He's got to. Like He was caught off guard last time. This time he's more prepared, more ready. But Ricky Shea now definitely has uh, starting to get a little bit of momentum back, almost getting the three count on David Scott. All right, as you saw, we just got a three. Both men on their feet. Shot to the to the rib. And oh, once and again, working over right that arm it. again that Dave Scott's been working on the entire time. Irish whip, reverse. Ooh, back elbow, caught him. Getting momentum. I think Big slam, here we go. Off the rope, sharp elbow drop. Yeah, but look, Ricky Shane ended up getting, uh, still hurt his arm coming down, going for the cover here. One, two, and no. Oh, no. You see, Ricky Shane, he could have had the three count. He would have went for it immediately, but since his arm's still hurting him, he wasn't able to do it. He was more focused on trying to get feeling back in that arm after Davis Scott has worked on it for a majority of the match. I think it was a mistake, sir. Oh. Ricky Shane now going back to Dave Scott, still. making sure he doesn't give him a second breather, uh, unlike earlier, to cost him almost the match. Yeah, you oh, miss. Dave Scott. Oh. And Dave Scott with a roll up, but wait a minute, Sullivan. And wait a minute, hey, 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 he, hey, look, JC. He's loose. What's JC doing? What in the world? Wait a minute, wait a minute. what's this? JC just run him up. Two, One, two, two three. three. That's it. Oh, my goodness. What a nice and, and Dave Scott loses to Ricky Shane, courtesy of that asylum escapee, JC Dykes. I, I don't know. It looks like he may have gotten a little loose from his straight jacket, but once again, Dave Scott has another loss to Ricky Shea. Fans, that's the show. Where did JC go? JC, he disappeared. Fans, we hope everybody had a great Christmas. We'll see you next week. Trust me, it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your winner, Ricky Shane. Trust me, it took a little bit for me to. I just, I just like calling the action. Oh, not very good.